Stormbringer has fallen into the hands of the Chaos Gods. A blood rain falls on worlds across the multiverse. Servants of Chaos bring blood and fire, seeking to enslave and destroy. War has come to Gastelu Mugatik. War under the blood red moon. <laughs> Hey, War Gamers, welcome back. We are on turn four, and we are going to roll for some more citizen mobs to show up to help fight the fires. And we get two. So we'll put those two here and here. All right. And now we're going to roll for initiative. Blue die is for the castle personnel. And they get a six. So they'll be moving first. I did make a turn sequence card to help me keep track and that I don't uh, skip things. I believe I did skip one thing in the last video, but that's all right. We'll let it go. So for right now, we're going to go ahead and move all of the castle personnel. So these mercenaries are going to move here. Actually, no, these mercenaries have four fatigue counters, so they're going to stay put. That will clear their fatigue. All of these soldiers as well are going to stay put and clear their fatigue because they've been moving and fighting. And this group of mercenaries, one, two, will move here so they can move into the tower next turn. Now here we have three units that will attempt to fight the fire. They need a one or a two to get it under control. There are none. So both of those fires are going to expand. This one, one, two, three, and the other fire, one, two, it's going to land on the same spot. So that's going to continue to burn. These will move here. The Iron Ring is going to chase after them, but they're going to move down into the catacombs. Here we have one, two, three that are in contact with the fire, they'll try to put those out. And they do get two of them. So we'll take this one. And this one. And the other three will expand. This one is a two. This one is a three. One, two, three, right there, same spot as that other one. And then that last fires a five. One, two, three, four, five. And I will push them back. All right. And then 
this unit of soldiers will move in and they'll attempt to fight that fire next turn. The banker is not going to move, so his fatigue will go away. I'm sorry, the merchant, not the banker, the merchant. The bandits in the keep are safe with the noble lady, so they're going to rest as well. I can take these off because they're not moving. And we're going to go ahead and give two to these here because they are fighting. And that's going to do it, I believe, for the castle personnel. And now we have the chaos side. They will move. He's undead. We'll move here. These darklings, well, they're going to move here. These darklings will move there. And then the rest of the undead. position. Now these undead at the front, they do have a battering ram, so they will use that when we get to the melee range. Now we have the missile fire. These two units of two tiles will fire at them. Because there's only two They will not be able to affect the undead because the undead defend as medium. However, the darklings defend as light, so they may be able to hit the darklings. Um, if they roll a three plus, they could possibly hit darklings if uh, that's where it turns out. So we got a two and a five, so one of them hits. And that's number six. If it is, one, two, three, four, five, six. It is indeed a darkling casualty. All right, so that's the melee phase. For magic, the priest of the Church of Starry Wisdom he is going to cast his ESP spell. He did not move, so that will take away his previous fatigue. However, he will get a new fatigue for casting ESP to determine what is on the other side of that wall. The two conjurers are going to fire magic bolts at the soldiers on the wall. They need fives. They do not get any. And Rasagos, who I believe has four. He has four fatigue tokens. He's going to get a fifth one. But first he's going to cast Dig one more time. That'll be a third time. So we're going to roll a d6 plus 2. He needs to get a 6. And there it is. So now we have a breach. And that will either breach 1, 2, or 3. Sections of the wall. And it will breach 2. So he'll get 1 on the keep directly underneath these folks. And on the next section in that hex there. So we're going to go ahead and mark that. What's the best way to mark that? So 
we have a breach. There. And since that's coming tumbling down, we're going to lose these two guards. In the melee phase, there are five undead in that stack. They have a battering ram. The undead attack as light. This will be versus heavy horse, which will be one die per four men, and they need a six to damage the gate. So they do not get it. All right. And so All right, so that'll be that for turn four. All right. Turn five. This is where things will get interesting. Why does that say one again? Castle personnel once again. So now the mercenaries will move forward and then they'll be able to fire arrows down upon the undead. And all of those guards will move forward in an effort to protect the gate. Here, they can fight the fire. We now have five fighting the fire. And they do not get any ones or twos. So all three fires will expand, starting on my left. One. That will push the iron ring back. Their warehouse is likely going to burn down now. The central one is a two. That will push these back. And the final one is another one. They'll go in that same spot. So that's where we are with that. Movement. The Iron Ring are going to move into this area. They are hesitant, though, to go into the tunnels. They did not know those tunnels were there. They do not know what's down there. And they don't feel they have the strength to go down there. However, they will stay there and guard that position in case those water cultists come back out. So these guards are not going to move. We'll take away their fatigue. And we have one, two, three, four that can fight the fire. Again, no ones or twos. Oh my goodness. All right, well, there's five. Let's just do it this way. We'll start by the wall and work our way counterclockwise. We have a five. One, two, three, four, five. That's already there. We have a six, which is here. This one is another six. Which is here. And this one is a three. One, two, three. It's going to push these soldiers back. They'll have to retreat in the face of the flames. And then a five for the last one. 
One, two, three, four, five. It's already burning, so. That's not good at all. The Castellan and his troops are going to move toward the breach. One, two, three. And sadly, we only have two tiles worth of soldiers there. And that is going to be the movement for the side of law. The side of chaos will now surge forward and attack through the breach. The undead are going to go first. We'll put them there. We'll put the next one here. We'll put the next one here. At the same time, the darklings will move up against the wall here and here. These undead will move in here and the scar did not move last turn but they will move this turn so they'll move up as well. <coughs> These Skarn will move into defensive position along with these bandits to protect the sorcerers. And now it is the missile phase. Our mercenaries have two. They are firing against the undead who defend as medium. So, as I recall, they will not be able to do any damage, but they can damage the Darklings, so that's who they're going to shoot at. They need a 3+, plus. they get one, that will take out the Darkling. So they go from 5 to 4. If they lose another one, they will definitely have to check their morale. All right, magic phase. Rasagos is going to Cast Dig here on the other side of the keep of the Witch's Tower. So that will be one there. I should really mark that or something. You know what? I'm going to put a. Well, I'll remember. Anyway, we're going to cast Dig here. He needs a six. If he gets a six, that will cause a breach, and it's a two. So that is the end of the magic phase. Melee phase, we have four tiles of undead versus two tiles of guards. The undead attack as light. The guards defend as medium. Light versus medium is one die per two men. They need six to kill, so they'll only get two dice. Town guard attack as medium, the undead defend as medium. Medium versus medium is one per one, and we need a six. So they'll also get two dice. And there are no hits, no casualties. All right, so that'll be the end of the melee phase. Where are we at for time? 19 minutes. Okay, we got time for one more. All right, we are on turn, turn five again. Turn six. 
I don't know what I think I know what happened there. Okay, well, in any case, turn six, roll an ish. This time, the forces of chaos get to go first. And in the movement phase, the darklings are going to climb into the tower. And they can do that four tiles at a time. And that will gain them a fatigue. The darklings here will also be able to scale the walls. So they will climb in here, and then these will be on top, on the upper area of the keep. Which I guess maybe I should have a separate map for that, but we don't. And that is going to be all of the chaos movement. The movement for law. Gets fatigue markers, and that is four fatigue markers for these mercenaries. So, most likely, next turn, if they don't have to fight, they won't. Oh, I forgot to bring these bandits on the board. I'll bring them on now. That is literally all we've got, I think, for the chaos movement. The law movement, I think we're going to stay put as well. However, the Castellan is going to join those troops there. We're going to treat the Castellan as a hero. He'll need to take four hits before he becomes a casualty. So, let's do our missile phase. We don't have any missile shooting. And now we have our magic phase. Let's roll to see if our priest was successful. He was. All right, so he has now an idea of what it looks like on the other side of that wall. And the Rastagos will cast another dig there. He'll need a five this time to create a breach. And that's a three, so it will not happen. And finally, we have melee now. Oh, we do have missile, I'm sorry. Uh, no, we don't have missile because they're in base contact. So what's going to happen is we'll have melee two sets of darklings versus the unit of mercenaries. Darklings fight as light, defend as light, mercenaries to fight as attack as medium, defend as medium. So light versus medium is one per two men. That's eight, that'll be four dice. And they need sixes. The medium versus light, they get one die per man, they need fives or sixes. We're going to go ahead and do this battle. We have no sixes or on the red side, and we have no fives on the blue side. So they will remain in combat. However, everyone gets two tokens. <clears throat> we 
Well, that's really too bad because now the Darklings are in a lot of trouble because they are fatigued, so they will be unable to fight back in turn seven. All right, the skeletons with their battering ram. Again, light per foot. They get one per four men. They need a six to do any damage to that gate. They do not. And now over here, we still have one, two, three, four skeletons fighting at light. Versus guards at medium, light versus medium is one per two, so they get two dice. Medium versus medium is one per one. And everyone needs a six, Oop, except for the Castellan, who gets four, and he also fights as medium versus light. So he needs sixes as well. So now we have six dice versus two. There should be some sixes in there. And we get four sixes. One, one for the skeletons, three for the guards. So we're gonna lose three skeletons. We're gonna lose one guard. Now those guards are going to have to make a morale check, but they will get a bonus because the Castellan is there. The guard's morale is eight. They need to roll less than an eight. Uh, actually, they need to roll less than a nine because of the Castellan. And they got an eight, so they will stay and fight. All right, so that's the end of the melee phase. That is the end of turn six. We've gone through three more turns. It's been 26 minutes. This is really interesting. I, it's not going a direction I thought it would go. So I'm pretty excited about that. And when we come back in the next video, we'll have turn number seven. And we'll roll to see if the witch activates now that her sanctum has been penetrated by magic thanks for watching be sure and subscribe and we'll see you very soon keep on gaming